Imagine an outdoor haven as cozy and inviting as your indoor spaces. Let's face it, we can spend a lot of time and money decorating our porches and patios only to end up with spaces that no one uses. So in today's video, I'll be working on my patio and sharing my top 10 ideas for creating a comfortable space where everyone wants to hang out. In fact, my family spent so much time on the patio this week, I wasn't sure if I was going to get this video finished. So we better get started. So far this year, all I've done on my patio is a little cleaning and unpacking of the furniture. So I have a long way to go. When I was thinking about what makes an outdoor living space cozy, I came up with a list of 10 things that I want to share with you today. First of all, if you live in a warm climate, I feel that if you're going to spend any time outdoors, you must have some shelter from the sun. Honestly, we spent almost no time at all on our very hot patio until we finally invested in a metal gazebo. Prior to that, we only had an umbrella that shaded a small table. We had had our umbrella for many years and the fabric was faded and stiff and stained and I decided it was time for a new umbrella. I ordered this pretty gray and white striped one from Amazon. I thought it coordinated well with my cushions and I absolutely loved its scalloped edge. Now that I've created some shade, the next thing I need to add is comfortable seating. Almost all of my patio furniture has been purchased at thrift stores over the years. Unfortunately, the fabric on my cushions was deteriorating. I was thinking about recovering them, but then I found these cushions on sale at Big Lots and I had a coupon for an additional 25% off. And I thought they coordinated really well with the gray cushions on my outdoor sofa. Now to cozy up this seating area, we need to add some texture and layers. And the way we accomplish that is exactly what we do indoors. We add throw blankets and pillows. And to create a few extra pillows for my patio without having to spend any money, I found some old Ikea pillow covers that I wasn't using anymore, and I filled them with stuffing from my old patio cushions. An outdoor rug will add additional texture to your space, in addition to defining an intimate seating area. Last year, I purchased an inexpensive but quite large piece of outdoor carpet. Unfortunately, I selected a dark, solid color, which shows everything. I was constantly using my shop vac to clean up leaves, sticks, and dirt. So I purchased a patterned outdoor rug at a big box store to layer over the dark carpeting. This will hopefully disguise a lot of the detritus that seems to collect underneath my gazebo. And because it's smaller than the large piece of carpeting, it helps to cozy up my seating area. Creating a sense of privacy and seclusion definitely makes a space feel cozy. You can achieve this in a number of ways with furniture and plant placement, screens or curtains. Because my pergola posts are hollow metal, the regular curtain rods I installed last year have come loose. So I ordered some tension rods to hang the curtains I received last year from Nice Town, And so far, I am totally impressed with how well these tension rods are working. They are quite long and sagging just a bit in the middle. So I used an S-hook to provide some additional support in the middle. 
I also bought an inexpensive metal arbor to create an entry to the patio. It comes with metal stakes that can easily be hammered into the ground to hold the arbor in place. I'm planning on buying a wisteria or honeysuckle plant to grow over the arbor. I'm gonna take a little break from working on the patio to scan my plant and flower receipts into Fetch. If you've never heard of Fetch, it is an absolutely free app where you earn reward points on everything you buy. And then you can redeem those reward points for gift cards to your favorite restaurants and retail stores. It's super easy to use. Let me show you how. Just open the Fetch app, press the orange camera button, and snap a picture of your receipts. Your reward points vary depending on what you've purchased, but you always earn a minimum of 25 points. If you're an online shopper like me, the Fetch app will also look for your e-receipts. When you're ready to redeem your rewards, just look for your favorite restaurants and retail stores like TJ Maxx, Target, and Walmart. If you'd like to give the Fetch app a try, click on the link in the description box and use the code COTTAGE to get an extra 100 reward points. Not surprisingly, plants and flowers are probably the most important element in creating a cozy outdoor space. Plants bring life and beauty to your patio, and strategically placed plants can act as a privacy screen, creating a sense of seclusion on your patio. They also buffer and diminish unwanted outside noise. I placed these planters on the stone wall last year to create more privacy and to make it more difficult for my cat to jump over the wall. Last year, I put little boxwood bushes in these planters and they ended up dying over the winter. So this year, I'm using free hostas from my yard. If they end up dying, there's plenty more where they came from. Another money-saving trick is to break up plants from pre-made hanging baskets to make them go farther. I like to add interesting decor items to my planters, so I hunted through my garage and basement storage room to see what I could find, and I came across this triple sphere thing that I thought would look great with clematis growing on it. Here's a little tip. When removing climbing plants from their pots, cut away the plastic or wood arbors that they're growing on. You'll be much less likely to break or damage the vines that way. I also found this large bird cage that I added to the top of a pot like a cloche. Then I added my plants inside. I like to add at least three different plant varieties to each pot. Something tall, something colorful, and something that hangs down or vines. Although ornamental grasses are not particularly attractive on their own, they are a very affordable way to add some height to your arrangements. I thought adding a terracotta bird would be a very whimsical touch to this birdcage pot. And I added this arbor to another large pot. I'll train some vines to grow up the arbor. And then I just stuck a thrift store pitcher inside the arbor and filled it first with some styrofoam and then with some potting soil. Lastly, I added some creeping myrtle, which I hope will grow down into the pot. My vines are pretty short at this point, so I used some strips of fabric to tie them to the bottom rung of the arbor. Fabric is a very cheap and safe way of tying your plants. If you don't have a cocoa liner large enough to fit your hanging basket, you can cut open two smaller ones, like those found at Dollar Tree, and just overlap them in the middle. Works perfectly. And you don't have to hang your hanging baskets. I like to use them inside plant stands or displayed on lawn furniture. I found this large pot on clearance for just $15 because of some chips along the bottom. 
rather than filling it full of dirt, which would have made it so heavy to move, I put another pot inside upside down and then just sat a fern on top of that. If you plan to spend much time outdoors at night or in cooler weather, you'll want to add a fire element. A few years ago, I was lucky enough to thrift this coffee table that converts to a small fireplace. It needed a refresh this year, so I gave it a good scrubbing and then spray painted it with Rust-Oleum's high heat paint. When I bought the table, it was missing the fire pan, so I incorporated a pan from a different fireplace. It looks a little odd, but it works. To make it look nicer when we don't have a fire going, I added some candles on an old cutting board that fits perfectly in the hole. Last year, I made this bench to store our firewood, but it always looked messy and seemed to be a hiding spot for neighborhood squirrels and chipmunks. So this year, I'm moving the firewood to a wire basket that I was lucky enough to thrift for just $3.79. Soft lighting sets the mood and creates a cozy ambiance for your patio. Whether you're hosting friends or simply relaxing, well-placed lights can create a warm, inviting atmosphere that enhances the overall enjoyment of your outdoor space. I like to use small solar lights to draw attention to my plants and flowers. To create a taller light, pop the solar light off of its stake and put it onto an old lamp base. I found these solar-powered fireworks lights on Amazon that I thought would add a fun new element to my patio this year. They were two for $20. I think they're so cute. They remind me of the puffball on a dandelion plant. Lighting can also reduce the risk of accidents or tripping hazards, so I like to use small solar lights on this gravel walkway. Finally, I added my solar string lights to the pergola, hanging them from small S-hooks. I put the solar panel on top of the pergola. I also added my DIY birdhouse chandelier wrapped in solar lights. Since the pergola has a slatted roof that cranks open, I can't hang the chandelier from the center of the pergola, so I hung it in a corner from one of the posts instead. The sound of running water is so relaxing, so I decided to make a combination bird bath water fountain for my patio this year. I mixed up some epoxy adhesive to attach two thrift store finds together. I'm not sure what this stand was originally used for, but it was the perfect size to be the base for my bird bath. I spread a good amount of the epoxy on the top rung of the stand, and then I sat a large thrift store metal bowl on top. I let the adhesive dry for about six hours. Then I took it outside and spray painted it black to unite the two separate pieces. I only have one outlet on my patio and it's behind the grill. So creating an electric water fountain requires using a long extension cord. So this year I decided to use a little solar fountain that I purchased from Amazon. I really like it, but it doesn't store its solar power, so it only works in direct sunlight. Adding your style with little personal touches will really make your outdoor spaces feel like home. For example, I like to use these watering globes with a little food coloring added to the water. And I love to use interesting thrift store finds, like this birdhouse, and this vine ball that I stuffed full of solar-powered fairy lights and then hung it in a tree. I had a large triangular arbor that I wasn't using, so I cut some slits in the bottom of a cocoa basket, put that in a hanging basket, and then shoved it over the top of the arbor. I love how this adds another layer of interest behind the garden chair. 
Last year, I purchased these solar-powered waterfall lights and hung them from an old thrift store teapot. I liked it, but I wanted to do something different this year. I had recently taken down this piece of DIY wall art from my family room and was trying to decide if I was going to keep it or get rid of it. So to get a little more use out of it, I wrapped it with my waterfall lights and hung it on the brick wall. I love how it fills this empty brick wall during the day and creates this interesting light feature at night. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing. It means a great deal to me.